Hello, this is Lord Og. Yes, it is. And welcome to my first Darkest Dungeon class guide. And the first character, the first hero we're going to do is the Crusader. Now, the Crusader is a melee class. It's probably one of the most underutilized classes, especially by people who are new to the game. Now, I won't say I'm old to the game. I haven't had it that long, probably just over a month. But So I'm still new myself, but I have worked out kind of ways I like to fight, use some of them to fight, and I think a lot of some wouldn't fight with him how I do, but we'll, I'll get to that later. He's, uh, he's very versatile. Now, his main strength is the ruins. In the ruins, he becomes OP. He becomes just completely strong. With Outside the ruins, he's still within my top half of all heroes, but in the ruins, he becomes in my top three. Without a doubt, because he really shines when uh, when he's in the ruins. Now, he's also good at handling stress, because with this with this skill here, he can attack the back row. Now, usually when you have str uh, enemies that can get, that can get you stressed, and if you don't know this game, stress is a terrible thing. Stress takes money; it wipes your money. It is awful money is one of the is probably the hardest thing to get in the game you've all you, you'll always be having a, a tough time chasing after money but stress will make sure you spend a lot of money fixing that up so you need to get through dungeons with as little stress as possible maybe even keep the same uh, four characters going in a couple of times but you so a crusader is good at handling stress simply because he can attack the third and fourth ranks, the third and fourth slot. So to explain this, if you haven't seen this before, this tells you where what slot a hero is good in, and this tells you what slot a skill could attack. So, uh, or what is stronger attacking right now. So, for example. Uh, this is slot 1, so this is closest to enemy, that's their slot 1, slot 2, slot 2, slot 3, slot 3, and this is their back back row. So, I am, these are my best places, and this is what I attack the best. But, the Crusader has a skill that lets him attack the stress users that usually hang around the 3rd and 4th slots, and that makes him really versatile. He also pairs well with other characters that move, like the Grave Robber. The Grave Robber's really good at moving around and bouncing from different slots forward and backwards. And he works well with any class that can move around like that. Uh, he also pairs really, really well with a Vestal, which of course is the healer. Mainly because, not because of anything more than just that, when the Vestal, when you camp, the I haven't got a Vestal, have I got a Vestal? I can't to show you. I don't know if I have. I think she's there. So the Vestal has camping skills that actually um, fit religious kinds of characters. And he is classed as a religious kind. So her, her skills, her camping skills, when you do actually camp, do hit him really well. And he can, and he can um, really make use of them. So he really does pair well with Vestal. Uh, when it comes to pros and cons, I think I've listed most a lot of good pros. He hasn't really got many cons on him, to be honest. He hasn't really got a lot of things that are, are kind of bad. I suppose. Uh, I suppose his camping skills aren't really that good. He, he is actually in bottom half when it comes to camping skills, but you know, that's not terrible. Uh, he doesn't have a very good disease resist either, but I don't class that as a problem. Uh, to be honest, so yeah, I, I think he has really good, con really good pros, and probably nil or average, you know, or small um, cons. So he is that, that in itself also makes him even better because there isn't much bad that much bad about him. So let's c cover the uh, skill section. So first we have Smite, and uh, Smite, as you can see. Attacks ranks one and two, and uh, it only works if the Crusader is in rank one or two. So from rank one or two, he can attack one or two, but he can't attack three or four. 
Now, the good thing, the thing that makes Smite even better is, if you look, it says 15% damage, V's unholy, plus 15% damage. So he gets an extra 15% onto his damage the, when he attacks a creature that is unholy, or an enemy that's unholy. And this is why he is good, because of the ruins, nearly all enemies are unholy, nearly every enemy. So he gets a 15% boost in attack every time he, he attacks one of them. Which is why I say he is really, really powerful in the ruins, simply because of that. The next skill is called Zealous Acquisition. Uh, this one's alright. I think more than anything, it's just... If you look, it's got a little line between the two reds. The first and second rows here. The first and second slots is a little line, if you look at, on the dots. And that means it will attack both them. Now, Zealous Acquisition into an amazing one. But if you've nearly got, say, uh, an enemy on rank 1 killed, or rank 2 killed, then you can use that so that you can kill that one that's left. That you can kill that one that's damaged bad. But you'll also get to at least damage the other one that isn't damage yet and give that some damage as well so you're kind of you're kind of making the most of it you're killing one and damaging one at the same time so uh, that makes that useful for that then we come to probably what makes him so versatile as i said and that is the holy lance skill mainly because again we get the 15 percent damage v is unholy but if you look he can only use that in slot three and four so we can only attack three and four. So we have two. We have uh, one and two here. Slots one and two here with a fifteen percent damage V's unholy, and then three and four here, fifteen percent damage V's unholy. So it can cover in a way all slots from all slots. It can attack every an enemy in every slot, and he always gets the fifteen percent damage boost for each time. And uh, also, it's uh, the thing is, it's, it's only 5% crit, which is average. It isn't a really high crit. It isn't really low, but I mean, because a lot of crits, that are, there's a lot that don't even crit that high. I, mean, I don't know if any of these show any crit. Um, but it's not really a massive, a massive crit, but it's average. But it's still there. I mean, it's still a 15% extra damage. And finally, we have Inspiring Cry. Now, right now, it's just a heal of one to one. But as you put this up, it go that goes up. And by the time you've got Inspiring Cry to level five, it's something like heal five to six every time. So that is not bad. Also, it gives you um, minus six, six on stress, and it gives you Torchlight plus five. So that's handy. Now, the one the reason I've told you these first is because these are the ones I use. Now, I'm going to show you these three. So, we have Stunning Blow. Now, Stunning Blow can only be used in ranks 1 or 2. And it can only hit ranks 1 or 2. And what it does is, it's got... Uh, I mean, its damage mod's not, not bad. It's pretty decent. It's not rate, really high. There are, da there are... I mean, like the damage mod... I was only showing on that. But the damage mod on a lot of other skills that other, others have got is higher. But it's decent. And then it's got a stun at the same time. Now, I'd rather just kick their asses before I need to stun them. I'm not one that feels like I've got to stun everything. But if I, if I do think I need to tie one up, I will stun them a bit. But I'd rather just whack them to death quick as I can and get the fight over with. That's kind of what I do. I don't use this character as a tank. I don't like to use him as a tank. I just like to get it, get out there and beat him up. And uh, this one's not bad. If you just, I mean, you, I'll, I'll light it up for you, so you can see it a bit better. So it's it's not bad. It's but it, it is what it is. It's an average stun, but it will do the job. Then we have this one, the Bulwark of Faith. Now, I don't use this. That's why it's locked lock still. But that's because when you use it. You mark you you can you mark yourself, but you also buff yourself for twenty five percent protection. Now that means that you become like it's like using you as a tank. You, it then turns into a tank class, and I don't use him as a tank. I don't like to even use him as a stun if I can help it. I just like to beat him up and kill him. So I don't want to fight to last long. So I don't use him as a tank. It's all out attack or nothing. And the final one is this. He actually has a heal here, which is. Uh, which is really good. I mean, because this has got a heal as well. But this one also has a heal. 
Battle Heal. And uh, that will go up two, of course, as you put that up levels. It's only level one. It's already two to two. Now, he is, a, as I said, a melee class. But let's say you can't bring a Vestal in. And, you know, so he could actually sit on back row and be a healer. It's actually better than what the... Um, let's see which ones we've got from... Than he is. The uh, antiqu Antiquarian. He's, uh, he's got a slight heal, but it's not very good. It's like one-to-one. -one. And then you've got an uh, occultist down here. They have a heal, which is 0 to 12. And it works. I'll cover the occultist some other time. But if that hits with a zero, then you get no healing. And that's the problem. Whereas the Crusader with this, you're always going to get a 2 to 2. At least, at least a two-point heal. So if it creates it, it'll go to 3 or 4. So that's good. So that makes him strong again. So usually I will activate that and this is my usual setup for bringing him in but sometimes i'll take that out and bring that in if i think i need to stun some because it might be a boss fight coming or it might be some really nasty uh ones coming in or i'll bring him sometimes if i ain't got a vestal in i might bring him as a healer class and put him on back row because you know he's going to be able to fight if he needs to so that's all good but usually it's this now this is how i usually run him when I start him in a party, I put him on the back row. And I attack their back row. Now, if all works well, you'll kill it. And if you kill it, because it's unholy, if it ruins, then because of what it says there, it says forward one, it means it moves your character forward to there. So then you attack their third row, and it moves you forward again to there. And then from there, you can just start attacking with smite. And you attack it front rows now. So, if, if all goes well, your first round, you'll kill that one. Second round, you'll kill that one. So, you've cleared two slots up in, with one character. And then, you can just wipe them up. And that's why he's so powerful in the Ruins. Because of these two skills together. Now, I'm not really going to go deep into camping. He hasn't got really good camping skills. Usually, they're a little bit too expensive. I mean, was like Zealous Speech is five. You know, and there's fours. He, he is quite expensive in some of them, and they don't really do a lot. There's a lot that there's a there's a lot of others that can do a lot better than him. You know, uh, fifty cents dress less bad, but this one is probably his best. Uh, the zealous vigil. You know, if you're afflicted, you can. I mean, it takes off on his on himself. Like it'll take twenty five off him, twenty five stress off his total stress, which is good. But the main thing is, if you look right at the bottom, it says prevent nighttime ambush if you if you camp the last thing you need is to come out to camp and get caught by surprise and you've healed a load of stress up and then you get all put back on again and this heat in the camping's been for nothing so you know this will make sure that you don't get caught by a, a, a kind of a, a when you come out to your camping you won't get ambushed so that's positive for that but the rest of them aren't really important so we don't really need to cover them too deeply um Quirks, you're looking for things like Slugger, things like that. Just, uh, he is, uh, the Quirk, because you want things that are going to give you crit. Anything that gives you crit, damage, um, maybe even a bit of dodge if you wish. But mostly, I'd centre around uh, damage and crit, if you can. Now, you can get trinkets in the game, but you kind of put them in here to give you, um, bonuses. Now, the two... Trinkets, I'd personally suggest, are the surgical gloves. And uh, I'll try and actually put a picture of them on the screen as I say them. And the reason I do that is because it gives you a plus on your crit mod. And it gives you also some accuracy. Which is also going to come in handy. So uh, you'll get that. And the other one I go with is the ancestral pen. Because that will give you another crit boost. And it will give you a damage. So between them two, you'll get crit, uh, accuracy, and damage. Now they have got they have got my they have got minor uh, bad things to them. But there's nothing that you that is really a problem. It doesn't it doesn't hurt you. You know they they are really the best. I think personally the best um, equipment, the best uh, trinkets to have for the uh, for the crusader. So, I think that's about it. I mean, though, uh, 
All I can say is, as I said, he is underutilised. He is good if you start him in slot 4 and just move him forward using Holy Lance. As soon as you get into 2, switch to Smite. And he's just he's just really good. And if you want that healing part, because you can't take a Vestal in or something, then just bring your healer in. Now, the thing is, the healing, if you look, only works in slot 1 or 2. Now, this one doesn't. This one, it can be in any. But it's only a 1 to 1 until you put it up. This one is only in slots 1 or 2. So if you use Holy Lance to bring him forward from there to there and then there to there, then you can sit him there if you wish and you can use Smite to help fight, but when you need it, you can bring in the heal. If you bring in a Vestal, then I'd suggest take that one or that one, depending whether you want the stun or not. Okay, so there you go. That's the Crusader. Please tell me what you think. Tell me if you like how I've done this. Tell me if you like how in-depth I've been. Oh, there's one more thing I'd like to just say before any more. You can get diseases in this game. There's, there is one disease I would suggest you keep, if you wish. And that is uh, rabies. Because what happens is your, your accuracy comes down. But, of course, we know with surgical gloves you get an accuracy boost. So that will kind of... I think it's a 10% loss on accuracy. But you get like 5% accuracy with surgical gloves. So it'll help take some of that out. It'll mitigate some of that that missing from uh, the uh, minus in, ac in accuracy you get. But you also get a boost in damage with rabies. So like 10-15%, something like that. I will actually uh, make sure I put that on the screen. You'll see it come up in words or you already have telling you what it actually is so there you go i think i've covered everything now if there's anything you think i should change or if there's anything i'm not clear on or if there's anything i'm you know you'd like to know then please feel free to ask give me some constructive criticism if you'd like to if you like how i've done this then let me know Are you can yeah i know why not let me know by tapping that little like button only once don't keep tapping it because it'll take it off me again <laughs> so if you like it just Click that like and that'll let me know that you like that you like how this goes. And uh, if you've got any constructive criticism, please, 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 please feel free to give it me so I can polish this up and make sure I do it the best for you, which is important to me. So uh, I'll see you again soon with another one of these class guides. But until then, you take care and goodbye for now.